Let's see how we're doing. Whoa, George saying good day. Nice to see you there, George. Hopefully we'll load up in a moment and then we can get started with the party. Uh, this should be an entertaining video. I'm excited to be here and hopefully... All right, looks like we're live. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com, the English Fluency Guide, and welcome to another live video here on YouTube. Today we are going to talk about the one thing you haven't tried that guarantees English fluency, and this will probably be uh, a really good review for people who have been with me for a while, who have been learning with me for a while, but especially new learners uh, who have struggled to speak. They often have doubts uh, and worries about communication that stop them from speaking, and especially if they've been learning for a long time and they finally want to become fluent speakers. We're going to talk all about that in this video. So in my... Well, Tsubasa says, Ohio from Yokohama. Ohio gozaimasu. Good morning out there in Japan and wherever people happen to be. All right, this should be an exciting video. In my last live video, what was that? Last Friday, I think, uh, I asked people what they wanted to learn about for this video, and someone said tips about speaking uh, and understanding better. Look at Tom Hanks. <laughs> I know people need to come up with something better. I don't even think I look like Tom Hanks. It just shows how, how like, you, you don't know. <laughs> but yes, people, people, I, I get a lot of that, the comment about people saying I look like Tom Hanks. I should do an actual video with Tom Hanks uh, just to show that we don't really look that similar. Uh, nice to see you there, everybody, though. I want to get right into the meat of this. If you do have questions, I will keep my eye uh, on comments. Uh, so anyway, this video, uh, the one on Friday, this was the, just a learner asking about tips for fluency. Uh, so I'd like to do something even better, which is really just share one thing that you really need in order to speak fluently. I want to keep this very simple and help people understand what you really need and what you don't need. Uh, and hopefully this video should answer a lot of questions for people. Pardon me if there's a little bit, I think there should be uh, maybe some construction or there is some construction going on around here. Uh, but hopefully uh, we do just fine. All right, uh, so there's really just one idea and I really want to make this very simple and if you look at all of the videos, so there are over 600 videos on my channel. I've been doing this on YouTube for over 10 years now and all of the videos, uh, they really have one theme and so I'm going to talk about that in this video. Uh, and again, this should really be a, a great way to answer a lot of questions people have about the issues that people struggle with. I'll talk about those. Uh, but we start with the idea about inside your brain, there's basically a fluent communication switch. Uh, and this was found by linguists, but you can, or language researchers really, uh, but you can discover this for yourself anytime you're trying to speak and you're unable to speak, it feels like your mind goes blank, all right? So the reason for this is basically you haven't been able to flip the communication switch in your brain, and I want to talk about how you do that very simply in this video. All right, so I want to help you imagine this. I haven't really talked uh, very deeply about the fluent communication switch uh, in a while, or actually really in, in any of my videos. I think maybe there are only one or two that I talk about this, because I want to make this very concrete, very easy to understand, very simple for people. But let's imagine like in your brain, I'm gonna draw, this is like the bottom part of your brain over here, so we have some space to work with. But within your brain, uh, there is a uh, what you might call a fluent communication switch for each of the uh, language learning units. It could be vocabulary or grammar or pronunciation, anything like that that you're trying to learn. Uh, and we know this is true because you probably feel confident and fluent or you can communicate fluently about some things, but other things you cannot. So I want to explain why that is. But it's just important to understand you don't really become fluent in the entire language at one time. What you do is you become fluent in individual words and phrases or you learn to pronounce things correctly or you understand more about culture one thing at a time. So as you understand something, you could actually have a, a group of things you understand at one time. But as you understand something very well, that's when you're able to communicate about it, all right? So let's imagine this switch here, just like a regular, a regular light switch, you know, on your, on your wall. So we have 
inside the brain. And remember, this is for individual words and phrases. So you can kind of imagine there's a little switch like this for each of the things you're learning. So each word or phrase, uh, gra grammar point, anything like that. So it's a simple uh, light switch and it just moves like this. It's like either it's on, we'll just say it's off over here, uh, or we move to the on position over here. Very simple. All right. Now, usually what happens uh, is that people are trying to learn languages by pushing the switch from off to on. And the way they're trying to do that is maybe they are like studying, uh, they're studying rules. We'll just put some very like brief writing uh, just examples up here. So you might be trying to memorize some rules uh, or you have some translations or you're studying something, whatever that vocabulary is, so more studying. So you're studying something, uh, and you're trying to basically push, if you can imagine all of these things are trying to flip the switch that way. So they're trying to turn it on so you're able to speak, all right? Now, here's the big problem that most people don't talk about that you've probably not heard about before, but you recognize it and you feel it every day or at least every time you try to communicate. Uh, and that is over here, there's actually like a small block. If I, can, if I can draw something like this. So the communication switch is prevented. It's actually prevented from moving over. It doesn't really matter how much you do this by any kind of doubt or worry or concern or question you have, okay? So we'll just put this block right here, and this block prevents the switch from moving over, all right? So very simple idea. So we'll just say these are doubts. Draw this more clearly. So doubts, whoops. So doubts or questions or worries really any kind of uncertainty at all, if you have any kind of uncertainty here, you will not be able to flip this switch, okay? So this is the situation that most people are in who are learning a language. It's, I speak about learning English on this channel, obviously, uh, but the same thing is working for everyone, and this is for native speakers as well. So when you're trying to learn something, maybe you're studying or translating, you could be repeating. I'll just put repetition over here. So you could be repeating things again and again. All of these things are really trying to push over here, but the real problem is over here. All right, so instead of trying to do these things, if you can eliminate the doubt, and pardon me as we get a, uh, a brief siren over here, I'll use that as a water break. All right, it should be going away. So the basic idea is that instead of trying to force your way to become a, a better speaker, you're trying to basically force your things. Oh my goodness, it got louder. Well, that's crazy. Uh, and I'll even put over here, since a lot of people think they need to speak in order to become a better speaker, I'll just put speaking over here. Uh, and speaking really, it's, it's basically part of repetition because you learn something and you repeat that thing either to yourself or you're repeating it to other people, all right? But none of these things are really dealing with the real problem. I really want to make this very clear for everyone over here because if you understand this simple idea, then learning becomes very easy, all right? So if the real problem is we have doubts and questions and worries or any kind of uncertainty, and remember, this could be uncertainty about pronunciation or grammar or vocabulary. Maybe you, you remember a phrase, you can recognize something. So often this stuff over here, you've studied something a lot and you recognize vocabulary, but you just don't have the confidence to use it. That's over here. So you have some kind of doubt or block that's stopping you from having the confidence to express yourself. Okay? So pretty simple idea. So instead of doing more of this, we actually need to attack this problem over here and we need to remove the doubt from the situation about this particular word or phrase or whatever that is. All right? So instead of doing the traditional things where we're learning, uh, these are the typical things like learning English as a second language that you would do, some kind of exercises or drills or anything else that's trying to push on this, and you've probably been told you really need to have 
uh, like lots of time or maybe spending even many years or spend even lots of hours trying to repeat things. But again, until you actually solve this problem over here, you're not going to be able to communicate because this is what's really stopping you from speaking. It's not really that you know some information a little bit. It's if you lack the confidence, you won't be able to express yourself. Okay, that's the basic idea. So how do we remove this? Uh, I want to give you an example of this. So this is actually what I call, so if we're trying to delete this, we want to destroy the doubt. That's really the goal of language learning like this. And this is what I call, if we want to use it this way, uh, we'll just call it a fluency trigger. So rather than getting more of this over here, we really need something that can remove the doubt as we remove the doubt or we replace the doubt with confidence and clarity and understanding. That's when the switch automatically flips, okay? So the, you, you already want to speak. There are already things you want to express, but you don't because you lack confidence about that. But as soon as you replace that, that doubt or that uncertainty with certainty and confidence, the switch flips and you're able to express that thing. All right, hopefully everybody gets this idea. Now, I, this is kind of theoretical here. I want to show you how this works with one of, one of my favorite examples. Uh, this is not uh, an English learning one, but hopefully this should make sense. I'll clear a little bit of space over here. But this is one of my favorite examples that I share with learners to understand this idea of a fluency trigger and all of these other things and why they often stop people from communicating. So this is a, a language learning lesson, but we're going to imagine we're learning an alien language because I don't know what language you speak. I don't want to use Japanese or some other language that you might already know. So it's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, if you know this example already because you've seen me teach it before, don't say anything. Don't ruin it for people uh, who are new who would be learning this. But this really is a fantastic example that demonstrates this point about how most people are language or learning languages and the things they try to do when instead, if you just use a fluency trigger, it will be a lot faster and easier. Okay, so you don't have to spend a lot of time language learning. The point is to actually use a trigger that makes it a lot easier. Oh no, pardon me as we have a little bit more, still some more construction going on. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me know, can, can everybody hear me? Well, there's like a little bit of sound in the background. Just give me like a thumbs up or something if you can follow what I'm saying. Hopefully everybody should be okay over here. All right, I'm gonna go uh, just continue with my example, but I think everyone should be able to hear me. All right, so I'm going to give you some numbers over here. Okay, everybody's working. Make sure those fit on there. Okay, so this is teaching you a new language. It's an alien language, and I'm going to teach you uh, the numbers. And so typically what people do when they're teaching a language is they will give you some information like this. They will give you some new words and they will probably give you a translation of that. All right. So I'm going to give you a translation of this. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So in a typical language lesson, again, I have the new language I'm trying to teach you. And then this is me teaching you that language like basically as a second language, what usually people are doing. So I'm giving you a translation over here, and then I'll just tell you, because there really isn't much more I can do with this, I just say, okay, you have to m remember this. So go home, make some flashcards, and like write these characters, okay, this is one, 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 you know, two, two, two. I'm going to write these things over and over again, and hopefully I remember them. Hopefully I remember them. So this is a typical language lesson, all right? It's actually typical for a lot of education, but it, particularly in language learning, I, you see how I'm just giving you these basic things over here. So I haven't really done anything to flip a switch in your mind that really helps you understand these things. I'm just giving you information and telling you to memorize it, okay? Hopefully, any, any questions, I think everybody understands this. So what I'd like to do is give you, I'll give you 
I'll be kind of a bad teacher here and just give you about 10 seconds. I'm going to give you a quiz. I'm going to erase these numbers over here and I'm going to give you a quiz. So take a few seconds, see if you can memorize these things and then I will erase them all and then we'll give you a quiz. All right, so just take a moment, see if you can remember them, whatever you have to do in your mind to try to remember these things. That's on you as the learner, not me on the, as the teacher. Uh, so this is you as the student having to figure this out. All right. We got five, four, three, two, one. All right. It's quiz time. Let's see how many you get correct. So now, just like in a regular lesson, so I gave you the lesson, I gave you some information, I gave you translations, I told you to go home and make flashcards, and then a few days later, we're just imagining this. But just like a typical lesson, so you would repeat something, maybe you would try writing them again and again. Uh, but again, all of these typical things here, you don't really feel anything in your brain at this point. It's probably kind of frustrating for you. Maybe you've already forgotten them. <laughs> But let me give you a quiz and you can test yourself and see how many you remember. Okay. So you can just type in the chat. Let's see how many we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 numbers. Can you write those? What did I write? Can you translate that from the alien language here into Roman numerals, or, or excuse me, Arabic numerals? Uh, regular one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can anybody do that? Can anybody translate these back uh, into, the, into the numbers? I'll give you a moment as I go back and check chat, see if anybody can figure that out. I'll try not to cover that up for you all. All right, so nice to see everybody. I won't go back through and uh, say good morning, but thank you all for joining me. It's nice to see everybody here. All right, let's see here. Let's see, there's back. Nice to see you there, Juan. Yes, uh, please, friends, give Drew some likes. Yes, see, it is back, uh, the, the like manager. <laughs> All right, Ilda says, yes, Drew, it is like flip the switch when you speak with one UK buddy for the first time. Uh, he says that understood me and it gives me confidence. I was surprised with myself. Yeah, fantastic. Glad to hear. Yeah, this works for everybody. It's the way we all learn languages. And really, I'm speaking specifically about language learning here, but this is really for any kind of learning. If you don't really understand something, then you probably won't feel confident about talking about it or doing that thing. Like someone could explain to me about fixing a car, but I don't really understand. You know, I, I, could, I could maybe learn to fix a little bit, but I probably could not rebuild an engine or something very quickly. So any learning, this is the same process that happens for all of us. But the point is, there are faster ways to learn and we really want to get not, we don't, we don't just want to get translations or study or something. The real heart of this thing is eliminating the doubt. Okay, I really want to make this clear. I've said this again and again in all my videos and emails and things like that. Uh, but the point here is to eliminate the doubt that people have about language learning. All right. So let's go back and see if we can translate this. Let's see if I remember, you know, I, I'm the teacher. I have to be the good person seeing if I can remember this. All right, let's see if we can remember here. Eight. Anyone get the first one? Anyone remember that? Let's see. Three, four, two nine uh let's see seven some people might have thought oh look seven kind of looks like seven like that maybe you remember or you used some kind of way of thinking like that trying to give yourself a kind of fluency trigger uh, let's see two three four six and then we got nine again and one did anyone get all of that was anyone able to do that now, the interesting question is, how was I able to do that? Am I just like very smart? I have a really good memory or something. Did I do that? Do I have some magic power for learning languages? Or did I do something different? Did I give myself a fluency trigger? All right. Was anyone able to do this? It's OK if you were not. Don't feel bad about that. <laughs> The point of this exercise is to show you what a bad lesson looks like. And by bad lesson, I just mean something that doesn't 
destroy the doubt. So I just taught you a new language and I made it more difficult, really, and I mean, you already kind of know the letters or the numbers in this case, uh, but it's more difficult for you to understand. Well, Elena, Elena figured it out. I think Elena knows the answer already. <laughs> You've been with me for a while. So especially for new people, this will be uh, most enlightening. You will enjoy this the most when I give you the fluency trigger. All right, so now that I've given you the bad lesson, let's go back, we'll put our numbers back up here. So everyone can, uh, can see, whoops, excuse me, there we go, actually wrote this uh, in, yeah, I didn't even put five up there, do, 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 okay, all right, so we've got our numbers up here, I'm going to put this back up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I actually wrote this incorrectly. I should have wrote number five. I wrote that wrong the first time I did it. Uh, but anyway, so this is how we're going through uh, and looking at these numbers over here. So we got number one over here. We got one over here, two over here, two over here. All right, pretty easy once I give you the translation over here. But the difficulty comes when you want to use it later if you don't actually remember it. It's more difficult to remember what everything is. All right, so now I'm going to give you a better lesson, what I would call a fluency trigger. And this is, very simply, all right, now if you look at these over here, see number one is over here. Number two is over here. Number three is over here. Number four is over here. So I've taken something that you've already seen many times, it's on your phone or on your computer, something like that, uh, and helps you, it helps you make a connection with the information, which makes it easy to remember, all right? So what I've done now, if I give you another quiz, if I put a bunch of these characters up here, you would very easily be able to do this because I've eliminated the doubt, all right? And once I do that, the switch automatically, we can just have it move over here like this. It flips to on, and now you can use this language, okay? So you'll notice like it is possible to take the rules or translations or study or repeat something or we're not you're learning any any speaking over here uh, but you could you can really force yourself to to do this over here so you can some people do actually i guess many people uh, do get fluent learning this way but most people do not and the reason they don't is because we haven't actually dealt with the real problem of removing the doubt so there are two ways to try to do this. You can try to do all of these things over here. You're trying to force your way to understanding something and trying to force your way to remove the doubt, but it's much easier uh, instead of just trying to push over here uh, until you've gotten rid of all the doubt, just remove the doubt, okay? And this is what a fluency trigger gives you. So if you look at all of my videos, what I'm really doing is trying to give uh, examples of things that are fluency triggers and it might be something simple like this like a, a visual way of understanding something uh, or it could be maybe a, a series of lessons or maybe even a story that helps you understand something but the whole goal everything I'm doing the, all the fluency triggers that I give you it's just to eliminate doubt when you eliminate doubt speaking becomes automatic and remember this is for individual words and phrases as you learn them and it could be for pronunciation or culture or anything else. But anytime you have doubt about something, don't try to study it more or repeat that thing over and over again. If you take this home and I don't give you a fluency trigger for it, if I just give you these things, if it's just a list, and this is again, uh, it's just a lesson with numbers because anybody can understand this in any language. But if I'm teaching you some new English, if I just give you a list of words, and then a translation in your native language, or I just tell you to repeat that thing or just study it, get a definition, you're not really not likely going to become a fluent speaker. And if you do, it's going to take you a very long time. 
Okay, so all of these things again are pushing on the switch this way when the much easier thing is simply to remove the doubt and the switch flips automatically. All right, I'll take a moment for uh, next siren over here <laughs> to go through. Uh, hopefully everybody's getting this though. Hopefully this makes sense for people. All right, so I gave you again the, the basic lesson here. Notice how it's not really a lesson at all. I didn't teach you anything. I didn't help you understand anything. I didn't remove the doubt. So the job of the teacher is to remove the doubt. If you are in a lesson and you still feel confused about something, especially with me, you can just ask me, oh, I didn't understand something. Please help me understand it. So the goal ultimately is just to remove the doubt. When you remove the doubt, you become able to speak automatically. All right, and this is for anything, so any word or phrase or grammar point, uh, the fluency trigger you need, it might be one thing or a couple of like a series of something. I'll give you a different kind of fluency trigger uh, with English in just a moment, but I'll just, let me see if anybody has any questions or comments in chat. All right, uh, let's see. Yes, uh, let's see, Lewis is Brazilian, has the most. Yes, I, there are quite a few fans in Brazil. Nice to see everybody there. Uh, let's see, yes, a lot of, yes, certainly a lot of Brazilians are, are interested in learning English. All right, so just going back and looking at the comments, I think most people had a difficult time doing this and I want to let you know it's not your fault. I'm showing you this is, it's actually difficult because this is not really an efficient, good, helpful, fast way of learning. All right. Does everybody understand this idea? You have a fluent switch in your brain. And imagine even if there's not like a fluency switch, you, can, you, you recognize, you understand that if you don't feel confident about something, you won't speak. This is the number one complaint I receive from learners. They talk about forgetting words uh, or they feel unconfident in conversations or they don't know whether a grammar point is this word or that word, something like that. Everyone has these issues and it's all coming from this one idea, okay? But the simple thing is once you get the fluency trigger for that particular thing, then it's very easy to do this, all right? All right, I'll keep going here, make sure I go through these quickly, and then I'll give you a, a quick, uh, an additional example in English. And if you go back, like understanding this idea of a fluency trigger, if you go back and watch really any of my other videos, you will see that's all I'm doing. I'm, just, I'm telling you, like, I'm kind of revealing the secret here, telling you what I'm doing, but the point is I'm trying to give you something that triggers this over here. So I want to eliminate the doubt. I want to destroy the doubt or worry or anything where you feel unsure about maybe pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, anything, so that the switch flips automatically and you feel confident about learning. So this example here, when you discover this for the first time, you should be like, wow, that feeling, it just, that's the feeling of what you get when you have a fluency trick, okay? All right, let me see here, anybody else? All right, I think people are getting it though. All right, yes, most people were not able to remember, but they figured it out once they got the fluency trigger. And that's really, this is an example of how quickly this can happen. You can do these other things over here for hours and hours, but this, it really takes one second for this example. All right, so that's how quickly this can happen when you focus on the fluency trigger, when you really focus on eliminating the doubt rather than just trying to repeat things and say things to yourself or other people, things like that. Uh, Elena says, do you live next to a hospital or what's the reason for the ambulances? Uh, there's a fire station about uh, three or four blocks away. <laughs> but, and there are a lot of old people in Japan. So you put those together and you know, we're going to have some, uh, some fireworks. All right, David says, can you apply this fluency trigger to a practical English lesson? Yes, I'll give you one in one moment. All right, Keith says, how to find thus magic and efficient rule and method. Again, like if you, if instead of focusing on this, and this is what I do as a teacher, so I'm here to help you really do this. This is why I don't tell you just, okay, repeat the same thing again and again. I want to help you understand things better. Um, and even for members of like programs like Fluent for Life, we're always trying to get naturally varied review uh, or different examples of things that really help you understand something because we want to eliminate the doubt. That's what really stops you from speaking, so we want to eliminate the doubt. Uh, let's 
see. So Dana says, I'm so happy to be here. Glad to see you. Uh, and how to get the triggers is Ryan. I'll answer that in a second. Uh, you are the best teacher that I have never seen before. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Blue sky. Uh, we can only be fluent when we are sure about everything. Yes. But remember, this is four individual words and phrases. So you probably already feel confident and fluent about some things. I'm sure you can say hello and how, maybe what's your name and you could talk about, like if you use English professionally, you can talk about your job. But maybe if someone asks you about something outside of your job, like what did you do over the weekend or did you see a movie or something like that, uh, this is when you might struggle because you don't have the confidence over here about that particular vocabulary. Okay, so you don't need to be fluent in everything. You don't need to have complete confidence about everything. It's the same thing with me for learning Japanese. So I'm like, I don't know the entire vocabulary. That's impossible. <laughs> and even native Japanese speakers don't know all the vocabulary or even all of the kanji. Those are the written characters uh, borrowed from Chinese. So there are lots of, lots of things in the language most people even native speakers, they're only using, like on average, about 2% of the language. So 2% of all the vocabulary, this small portion over here, is really the thing that most people know. So you really should be focusing on this and trying to get as many fluency triggers as possible because the more fluency triggers you get and the faster you get them, the faster you get fluent. All right. So you are unlikely to become a fluent speaker simply by studying more or repeating more or even getting more speaking practice. And this is why lots of people live in English speaking countries for years and still don't become fluent speakers. All right. Does everybody understand this idea? I really want to make this very clear for people because if you continue to do more of this, you can feel it's very frustrating when you're trying to learn something just by studying it and repeating it and hoping you remember it. Uh, when it's much easier just to get some kind of trigger that helps you understand the vocabulary so you feel confident about using it. All right, uh, anybody else there? Don't be afraid to make a mistake when speaking, says M. Well, I actually, I don't, I don't recommend this. This isn't the kind of advice that I give to learners. So a, a typical teacher will, will try to do all of this stuff and they will make you repeat things and study and they will just say, just go out and, and try to speak. Don't, don't worry about making mistakes. But me, as like an English fluency guide, I know that I need to eliminate the doubt. That's actually my job. So it's not my job to just give you a translation. That's not teaching you anything. If I give you a translation and just tell you to go home and study this, and then, okay, if you don't use it correctly, that's on you. That's not my fault. That's your fault. So that's the typical way people are learning languages. And the typical advice then is it's okay if you make mistakes. But people don't want to make mistakes. They want to communicate correctly. It's embarrassing if they don't communicate correctly. So obviously the real, the real problem is over here. It's not this stuff over here. It's you need to eliminate the doubt. So the job of the teacher is to find creative ways to eliminate the doubt for vocabulary or grammar or whatever, okay? So if you're trying to do any of this stuff over here, trying to push on the fluent communication switch in your brain, it's going to be much more difficult for you to do that. So this is why, uh, again, I don't, I don't bother telling people like, don't be afraid or whatever. It's my job to make sure you are certain all right. Of course, like you can try using things. You might not feel perfectly confident all the time. That's fine. Uh, but as best you can, you really should be feeling certain about your vocabulary. All right. Uh, Esteban says, I've been working on that since last week, and I actually had a full conversation with one of my neighbors last night. Glad to hear it. Taco says, should I put on subtitles if I can't keep up with speaking speed? If you're talking about in general, yes, then feel free to use subtitles. For these videos, the subtitles are usually released about a day after the video is done. So I don't have the subtitles available, and there are no captions in these videos uh, because they're live, and Google doesn't just automatically caption things. Um, but that's how you're going to get it after the video is done. So if you want to come back and watch this video again uh, tomorrow when the captions are available, you can certainly do that. Uh, so I think the best way to be confident is to acquire language listening and reading. So remember, like I, you could put listening over here or reading or watching. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you're doing if you don't remove the doubt. So you can do all of this 
and you you can some people can become fluent uh, by putting immense pressure on their brain to try to remember things but most people do not do that and I'm telling you you don't have to do that all right if you just instead of pushing this way just remove the doubt remove whatever that is by getting a fluency trigger anything that helps you understand the vocabulary better all right. Uh, Key says, when you share these efficient methods, I think you have a deep understanding of psychology and how the brain works, don't you? Well, I'm, I'm interested in that for many reasons, but you know, I studied psychology, uh, philosophy. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, anybody who's teaching should understand how the brain works and how the brain wants to learn. Your, your brain wants to speak. You were born to speak. Everybody on the planet is able to speak. I mean, maybe there are a few people, maybe they don't have a mouth or they have some difficulty or something, but almost everyone is able to speak. And we all learn to speak. So learning to read and write, those are things that take more time. But really speaking, it comes very naturally for people because we're getting lots of examples and really uh, fluency triggers that help us understand the language we're learning. So it doesn't matter if it's Chinese or, or Korean or Spanish or Italian, <clears throat> whatever the language is, if you eliminate the doubt, then you'll be able to use it. All right, uh, Dan says, teacher, I got a question for you. I understand you very well, but one day I was listening to Obama's speech and I didn't understand him very well. Could you tell me what happens? Again, Obama is speaking differently than I do. His pronunciation is different. He's probably speaking faster and using some vocabulary that you don't know. So you have doubt, okay? If you don't understand what somebody says, You've got doubt about that. So you need someone to help you understand what the vocabulary is and help you understand and remember it, help you remove the doubt about that vocabulary. So that's my job. That's what I do. All right. Uh, so M says, please, uh, please teach me how to do it, sir. All right. David says, I think you can do everything you want on your life. Or you'd say in your life. Uh, it's just not giving up. Most people stop on difficulties and get afraid of moving on. Uh, yes, that's true. A lot of people, a lot of people uh, quit before they should. But this is an example of a lot of people will try learning languages and quit because this is what they've been told to do. So it's not their fault. It's not that they're stupid or can't learn languages or something. And that's something I used to believe about myself. I used to think I was too stupid as I failed to learn many different languages. But then I discovered this and it's like, oh, okay, this is much easier. <laughs> So the, the problem is, how can I understand something well? Uh, and it's much easier when you have someone to help you learn. All right, David says, to learn English or any language takes years, not hours or months. You can do it, never give up. Again, uh, hopefully this example, um, again, I'm going to give you a, uh, an, an English example in just a moment. But hopefully this shows you how quickly you can do it. So you just learn 10 new or nine, I guess, uh, 10 new numbers, nine new numbers, in an alien language in almost a second. It was almost instant once you understood this. So that changed the way you thought and that gave you a way to eliminate the doubt about that so you could start writing these. You could write a thousand of these characters and probably do it perfectly now just because you got this fluency trigger over here. All right, uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's correct, just like from our video last week. And Keith says, I wonder why you can react so quickly and confidently when there is a sudden question. So amazing. Well, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> so again, like I'm, I'm, able to, I'm able to do this fluently because I've, I've done it for a long time. Uh, but I've also studied like these ideas and I've spent over 20 years trying to make this very simple for people. Uh, and I continue to refine the way I teach, but I think probably the fastest, simplest, easiest way to explain what I do is to give you a fluency trigger, okay? Just that idea by itself, once you start getting those, everything becomes a lot easier. So let me give you one of these in English, since we are here to learn the English language. Again, I will contrast uh, kind of the bad way of teaching with the fluency trigger way of teaching that I do. Uh, so the bad way of teaching, I'm going to teach you two phrasal verbs. Phrasal verb. All right, so phrasal verb, these are, I'm just going to give you like a quick definition of this. Uh, just combinations of words that let you express things in a simple way uh, that you could also express in a more 
difficult way, typically with more advanced vocabulary. So we're going to take some simple words, put them together that you can use to express some more complex ideas. All right, so the first one, let's see, we will do, let's do fall down and then fall over. Now, if this is a typical lesson in a classroom, and especially a lot of people are uh, learning English through their native language, so I would just tell you the translation of these things, whatever your language is, I would just say, oh, fall down means this, uh, and fall over means that. And then I just give you maybe a few example sentences, like, look at that, like the leaf is falling down, uh, or the building fell over, or something like that. Okay, so I could explain it to you, I could give you some definitions, and then I say, okay, go home, and I want you to remember that. So go home, make some flashcards, repeat these things again and again, maybe try listening to them or reading them or speaking, whatever you think you need to do to actually remember that. But will it flip your fluent, uh, your fluent communication switch? Will it eliminate the doubt you have about using these ones? Which do you use, okay? So you see somebody fall down or somebody fall over. Do you know which one? Do you feel confident about that? Do you have absolute certainty that you would use it correctly? Okay, so that's kind of the bad lesson, the bad lesson. So again, the bad lesson is where I give you information and I tell you to learn it. I tell you to remember that thing rather than me finding a way to eliminate the doubt. So let me just show you how this works nice and easily. Uh, this fluency trigger is really a simple visual example. So the last one I gave, it's another kind of visual example, but this is a similar thing. I can take this marker and I watch as the marker falls down. Fall down. Fall down. So you see it's moving just straight down like this. It's falling. So up here, of course, I, I'm holding it in my hand. I drop the marker and then the marker falls down falls down. Now watch this. This is a little bit different. I'm going to put the marker in my hand and I'm going to let go. I will let go of the marker. So that's another good phrasal verb for you to let go. Watch what happens to the marker. Whoop, did you see that? It fell over. Fall down. Fall over. Fall over. Okay, so here uh, you might need maybe a few more examples of seeing something like some leaves are falling down or a tree when you cut it falls over. But you should, just by seeing this, this is the same way native children learn these examples. And this is why phrasal verbs are actually quite easy. They're much easier than most people think. It's just how you learn them. Okay, so the marker falls down. It's just taking something and, you know, dropping straight down or something falls over. So you can imagine a person, like a person falling down, or if a person falls over to the side, like that, okay? So the fluency trigger here is the physical, just showing you an example by contrasting these two things and showing you how they work. So once you see it, okay, we, we've got fall, but there's, there's different kinds of falling, okay? I might have like a hole or something here, and look, the marker like, whoop, it falls into the hole, Fall, falls into. Or I could have another hole or some kind of, you know, container or something, like a tunnel, and the marker falls through that thing, falling through, okay? And now we can take these ideas and we can build on them even more. We can extend the fluency trigger and we can take something like, well, we got fall through, the marker is falling through this space here. It's like falling through the air. And then we can talk about maybe a contract fell through or my job offer fell through. So something where I thought something was going to happen, but it didn't, all right? It fell through. Unfortunately, uh, I had a new job offer, but I didn't get that thing. It fell through. The job opportunity fell through. It fell through. Okay, so anytime I can give you a visual example or a story or something, the goal here for me as the teacher is to eliminate the doubt. And you might need a few examples. Maybe you come back tomorrow and we give you some more examples, but that's really the goal. 
you, to get as many fluency triggers as fast as possible so you can get fluent as fast as possible, okay? So the only thing stopping you from getting fluent is removing the doubt. You can try to do all of these things over here, study more rules and translations. You can try to repeat things, even trying to speak to yourself or others. But remember, if you don't feel more confident, if you don't feel certain that you will communicate correctly, this stuff is probably going to waste your time. It's good to repeat things, but you really want to repeat things after you already have some strong understanding of that. So like if I'm studying some Japanese and I learn some new vocabulary and I, I figure out like, oh, that's like a very good, like, oh, the fluency trigger really helped me understand this. And this is for anything. It's for learning any language, really learning anything. By fluent, it just means you can do that thing automatically. So without thinking, without taking time to hesitate or translate anything in my head, you can see how this would solve a lot of problems, okay? Oh no. Now I need a fluency trigger for these sirens over here. <laughs> I need a way to, way to stop all those. But let me see if anybody has any questions about this, but hopefully uh, this makes sense. Uh, let's see. Yes, she says, Hi, I'm studying English uh, as a second language. My problem, a lot of spelling errors. How can I improve that and also have problems with my grammar? Please give me your advice. I'm writing. Thanks. Okay. So again, you're studying the, like all of these things over here. If I can, does this fit over here? I'll put this over here. These are all uh, learning English. English, I'll just say here. Learning English as a second language. So all of these things over here, these are what people typically do, and it's because you're learning English as a second language that you have trouble remembering things or that you're not understanding grammar rules or vocabulary or forgetting things. Uh, it's because the, these things over here don't actually remove the doubt. You could just repeat something. I can teach you a new word and repeat it over and over again, and you might remember it, but you don't really understand it. You probably still have some kind of doubt about that thing. So until you remove the doubt, until you really understand that thing, that's, that's where you will continue to have trouble. All right? So the goal is not to, like just to continue doing more of these things. So the best advice I can give you is to stop learning English as a second language, all right? So if you watch my videos, like go back and watch any of my videos, uh, I'm, I'm basically just giving lots of fluency triggers. So even uh, in Fluent for Life, so this is my actual fluency program, Fluent for Life. It's really just like thousands of these fluency triggers. So I'm giving you lessons, they're all organized so you can decide what you want to learn about and then you just start getting these. I just like give you them like over and over and over and over again. So giving you lots of them. And the point is again, to remove the doubt that stops you from speaking. So answering your question uh, about Frederick or about uh, remembering spelling rules, Frederick is the other tool that I made for learners like you who want to understand spelling, F-R-E. D-E-R-I-C-K. You can click on the links in the description below this video to learn about both of those. But Frederick will teach you these same rules. It will basically give you a bunch of fluency triggers and help you discover what these rules are. So learning how to spell, Frederick is going to teach you that. And then if you want to become a fluent speaker for learning grammar rules and all the vocabulary you need to speak, that's what Fluent for Life is for. All right, but does everybody get this idea? So you can, like you can find fluency triggers yourself. It's really any time you can make a connection where you get a lesson or an example or see something or hear a story where you think, oh, like I get it now. The point is to get clarity and understanding to remove the doubt. So you replace doubt with certainty. And when you do that, then you can use that thing you feel very confident about speaking, all right? I think everybody's getting it though. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. All right, uh, Elder says raindrops falling on my head. That's right, so they drop, you know, so they both drop like raindrops. We call it like a drop, all like the cloud is dropping the rain and then it's falling through the air. Okay, again, using graph and scene to remember something is really efficient. Yes, and so this is just one example, but I'm trying to remind you also how you learned as a child. So your parents were probably not doing these things. You definitely did not learn your native language through translations because you didn't have another language already. You're just trying to learn your first language. 
So the only way you can do that is for parents to give good examples. So this, this same idea of a fluency trigger, it's for non-natives and for natives. It's for everybody, all right? This is not just for people trying to learn English if you already know a different language. This is for anybody. So even children, uh, you can see that like, like let's say we all have kids at the same level, you know, if we can rank them, the students who get the more or students who get like more and faster fluency triggers will become better speakers faster. Okay. I would be happy to study that in a lab if it was possible to do that. Uh, but anyway, you could take probably a group of kids, split them in half, teach one the traditional way and then give one the like just a bunch of fluency triggers and that that second group would become great speakers very quickly. All right. So native speakers can do this and you can do this as well as we just showed in this video. All right. Uh, let's see. Yes. She says, can you tell me what time and what day do you reach? Oh, you mean teach? Uh, so these videos are unscheduled. Uh, like I don't, I don't have a schedule for them. Um, but typically they are usually Mondays or Thursdays, Japan time. But so today is Monday in Japan time. Uh, and then the next video I think will be this Friday. I think, I think. So I was a little bit late, uh, getting started on this one cause we have some construction in the building, but we're here now. All right, uh, Yadir says, I think grammar is always very important. We cannot deny or just listen and talk like a parrot without understanding what I'm talking grammar and order, uh, also important. Yes, and so my point is the, the idea of a fluent communication switch that works for everything. So it works for vocabulary, it works for grammar, it works for pronunciation. The point is if you have a doubt about something, you need to focus on eliminating that doubt. And there are different ways you can do that. So that's why all of the, all of the lessons I give here on YouTube, they're really just different examples of fluency triggers. So it could be a story, it could be a visual example like I did with like fall down versus fall over or fall into or fall through. Uh, or it could be, let's see, like when I give naturally varied review. So as an example, let's say you hear like this, right? If I say phrasal verb, let go, but you hear 10 different native speakers say that. You're going to hear each person speak a little bit differently. Their pronunciation, their accent will be a little bit different. And so you will become more used to understanding natives as they speak normally. And so people who only listen to slow, easy teachers, they're not getting that naturally varied review for pronunciation and listening improvement. And that's why it's important when people say like, why should I join programs when you have lots of information on the YouTube channel? Because most of the stuff I do is at an easier level to make sure more people can understand what I'm saying. But for people who want to understand uh, at the native level, you really need to get lots of examples from different native speakers. So that's an example of naturally varied review. So another example, like, like I gave before, like a similar kind of naturally varied review. I don't want to just repeat like fall down, fall down, fall down. I want to show you how it's different from fall over or fall into or fall through. And then take that and extend that into other uses where like, oh, like I just fell into this job. So I was, I was walking down the street and I found like some guy who was, uh, I don't know, painting his house. And I said, oh, like, that's a nice house over there. And he said, would you like to help me paint? And I just fell into a job. So he paid me some money to help paint his house. I fell into the job. So it was like an accidental thing, like, like I'm walking and whoop, I just fell into that thing. So this is a very common use of that phrasal verb where we take something physical, like falling into a hole, like, oh, I just fell into the job. So if you weren't trying to do something, it was an accident, it just happened, almost like you're walking and whoop, you just fall into a hole. Yep, fall in love is a similar idea. So often you don't really expect that thing, you just, wow, I just, I met this beautiful lady on a cruise and wow, we just fell in love. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. But you see how I'm, what I'm doing is, trying to make connections and eliminate doubt. Because as soon as I teach something, your brain is, is thinking, oh, how can I use this? Can I, can I use it in this situation or that situation or how do I pronounce it? That's why I want to continue giving you more fluency triggers until you really feel confident and that's when you start speaking. 
So as you get more fluency triggers, you find they connect with each other and you can become a fluent speaker even faster. Okay, isn't that cool? Hopefully this is, it should be like an amazing lesson. People like, wow, like look at that. Yes, you don't have to do all these things over here. Really the goal is to get a fluency trigger that helps you eliminate the doubt you have and then you will speak. So the funny thing here, uh, this shows that if you speak where you're trying to repeat things, if you don't feel confident first, speaking is probably not going to help you. So a lot of students think they need to speak or they need to live in an English speaking country uh, or they need to be a child or something. But you can see over here, all of this is, it's really trying to do the same thing. You're trying to force yourself to remember something. When it's much easier, just eliminate the doubt, okay? All right, let's see here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, David says it's really easy to learn with fluency triggers. Yep, that's the whole point. All right, uh, the visualization is really helpful to understand the language in general. Yes, absolutely. So I'm trying to help you. Anything that really makes it clear. So when people are like, wow, Drew, I really feel more confident after watching the videos, it's just because I helped you eliminate some doubt. I helped you eliminate some doubt. So Pathy says it's very, very clear, easy to understand phrasal verbs. That's the real fluency trigger. Yes. So this is another just example. Many people think phrasal verbs are difficult, but it's really because of how they learn them, not because the phrasal verbs by themselves are really difficult. Key again says, I think these are also really useful when we learn other things. Yes. So as I said, this is the language learning example of this, but the fluency trigger in general, by, by fluency, we're talking about language fluency, but you can be fluent in anything. I can be fluent in fixing cars or riding a bike or anything else I'm trying to do. It's just, do I feel confident about that? Another example of a fluency trigger, uh, I've told this story, so this is a story example of a fluency trigger, uh, but the point is to again eliminate doubt to help you understand something. So the idea of a fluency trigger, can I remove the doubt? I was uh, walking, this is a real story, this really happened to me and actually uh, Fluent for Life members can see this actually happen in, uh, I think it's in the learning, uh, like education and learning lesson set. But they can actually see me uh, learning a new skill by getting a fluency trigger. It's actually like a really, uh, really interesting thing to see. I'll just tell you the story very quickly. So I was walking down the street here in Nagasaki, Japan, not far from where I am now, and I saw two maybe teenagers or college kids. They were riding BMX bikes, BMX bikes. So they were kind of spinning bikes around and trying to do tricks. And, I, and I, I was there with a friend of mine and I had my camera and I said, oh, I bet this would be a good lesson if I can learn how to do this. Can I figure out how to ride a bike like them and do just one trick? So I, I, I don't know how to like ride a BMX bike or do lots of tricks, but I learned how to do this one. And so that you can see the learning process happening. I'll just describe it here. Uh, but I'm watching these guys and I say, okay, can I try that? And they were very friendly. They said, oh, look at this guy, you know, trying to learn how to do these tricks. And so they were happy to show me how to do that. Now, what was interesting is that like I tried like the kind of bike riding idea for these things. So like they, they explained something to me. I tried to understand, I tried to like do it, but I kept falling off the bike. So I was still, I was doing these things, I was trying to repeat, I was trying to copy them, I was asking questions, but I still didn't really understand, like I didn't remove like the doubt, I didn't really, really understand how to do that thing. But then one guy gave me a fluency trigger. And what he said was, like the reason I kept falling off the bike is because I needed to hold it with my legs so that the bike didn't fall over. So if you can imagine like the bike is here, like these are the, the two pedals on the side. I'm kind of just standing on it, but I needed to like hug the bike with my legs. And that way I could control the bike and keep it from falling over. The trick is really uh, to, to kick the bike up and then spin the wheel around, spin the front wheel and then put it back down. So I wasn't able to do that, but as soon as he gave me that little trigger, I thought, ah, now I've got it. So that's, again, the moment of clarity, the aha moment, as I call it. So the fluency trigger allowed me to do that, and now I can do the trick. So if I see someone else with a BMX bike, I could do that trick with it. All right. So it seems difficult until you get the trigger to really understand how something works, and often uh, many things 
are really like this. So something seems difficult and we try to do the typical things of just repeating something again and again because that's what we're told to do, but really many things are much easier than we might expect. So that's another example of a fluency trigger, uh, but just in real life. All right, uh, Big Nick says, a big in, big, let, me, let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I always need to get that pronunciation again. Hi, Andrew. Now, after your lessons, my vocabulary book, book pages look more like spider graph uh, than just a list of random words. Thank you for your tips. Yeah, it's my pleasure. All right. Let's see. One question. When is in Japan? So it's, well, it's Monday morning right now. I forget the date, though. Uh, let's see. Esteban says, that's true. I see it now. We are always learning to translate everything into our native language, and that becomes a problem. Yes. So if you translate when you learn, you will translate when you speak. So that's it. And the reason people translate is because they have doubt about what something means. But when you're certain, you don't translate anymore. You don't have to translate. You just learn it like it is in English. Uh, let's see. It looks like we got some Hebrew there. I'm a new subscriber to this channel. Great lessons. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Uh, let's see. Shiva says, what is the difference between confirm and conform? Oh, that's an interesting one. Now, those, uh, they sound similar. Uh, I'll give you a very quick definition of both of those, but you will learn a lot more if you just Google those because you can just get more definitions. Often people will, will ask me, like, what something means, and I explained this in the last video, but the reason I will answer some questions and not answer others is if I think I can get it, uh, give basically people like a fluency trigger and help them understand something very easily on a video, then I will just explain the answer. Uh, in this example, Really, they, they're just two words that sound similar, but they're, they're not really the same thing. Uh, confirm means like I want to check something. So maybe I, I see someone in the distance, they're walking up to me and I, I think that's my friend, but I don't know for sure. I want to confirm that it is, so I walk closer and I see that it is my friend, okay? But to conform really means I want to like fit into the shape of something else. So if you, you can think about a physical example, like if I have a bowl and I drop some water into it, like the water even in here, the water in this bottle actually conforms. So con, like with, form, like the shape of that thing. So it's with that same shape, to conform to something. So the, wa the water in this bottle conforms to this bottle. If I take the bottle and, and tip out the water, then you will get lots of water on the table or whatever, uh, and then it conforms to that. So you can think also about conforming, uh, like I want to conform with how other people think. So if other people have a belief about something, maybe I share that belief or I lie and I say I believe something too. So those are examples of conforming to something. One is a figurative, like the me changing my beliefs, and the other is a physical example of that, like the way like this marker kind of conforms uh, to my hand if it changes shape or it, it fits into something very well to conform to something else. But you notice like instead of me just giving you a definition, I'm trying to help you understand that thing and that's just an example of a fluency trigger. You see how this works? So you don't want to just repeat the word. Like if I say, okay, go home, look up a definition and repeat confirm, confirm, confirm and conform, conform, conform. You know, that's not going to help you learn much, but if you get some quick fluency triggers, it's much faster and you become fluent and you feel confident about using that thing. All uh, right. Let's see. Visualization helps a lot understanding the meaning of it. Yeah. And again, this is how natives, so like young babies and kids are learning English this way, and then they start taking what they learn, just like I did with the uh, conform example. So we, we start with something like physically conforming to something else, but then we can build on that as I've done earlier in this video as well. So young children are learning the same thing. Oh, uh, happy, yes, happy Chinese uh, New Year over there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Ah, intimacy. If you're, you're talking about like, remember to be to be intimate to be intimate with something means like you have a, a close connection with that thing. So you can say I have intimate knowledge of something. That's one example. Like I have intimate knowledge uh, of how language learning works because I've been learning and studying this for like, and I've even just been even just teaching alone uh, over 20 years of doing that. So I have intimate knowledge. Uh, but intimacy also, again, it, it just means like a close connection to that thing. Use your English, though. You know some English. Use your English in your questions. 
All right, uh, hello, sir. Uh, I guess, yes, yeah, says Gore. Uh, all right, I answered that question already. Do I need another course after your fluency course? Well, no. <laughs> if, you're, if you're talking about like becoming fluent, like one, once you go through Fluent for Life and people who buy the program, uh, they, don't, they don't have to go through all of the lesson sets. Like you, you kind of get a bunch of fluency triggers for the individual things you're interested in, like the grammar that you struggle with or anything you like to know about. But the program actually, it's, it's designed to graduate you from learning like languages the, the way people normally learn to being able to learn like a native. And so after you go through the program, then you're just learning in the real world the same way natives do, and, and you understand how to learn like a native. So it's, I mean, it's basically the last program you would need to get um, if you're trying to understand the same way natives do, and you want to get basically a lot of, like, thousands of fluency triggers. <laughs> so if you, like, uh, when I'm learning Japanese, I have to kind of create these things for myself or find examples or get little, like, I remember my... Uh, so my, I got a, a perfect example uh, yesterday. So my 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 wife was talking about like like an angel. Was, I'm going to draw kind of a bad picture of an angel up here. So this is an angel, uh, and and she was saying like she used the Japanese word for this, uh, and she and I think it's uh, waka, uh, and and I, that was the first time I'd heard that. But again, when I hear something like that, I'm just like, it, it, it kind of goes into my ear and then I forget it. So I'm not really learning anything. Remember, like someone just tells you what something is, like, oh, like, waka. All right, uh, I think that's what it is. And, but then she continued, she actually gave me a fluency trigger, which was, oh, like a ring, like wa, you know. And I was like, ah, at that moment, ah. <laughs> when you feel it, like, oh. Now the doubt is gone, I remember the word, uh, and then I taught her the English. If you don't know what this is, this is a Halo. Where's uh, our, our video game player out there might know this game as well, Halo. So the, the little ring around an angel uh, is called Halo. But this was an example of me getting a fluency trigger in Japanese, and I remember the word forever. It's like, ah, waka, nah, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right, do I, uh, okay, I answered that one. I mean, is it comprehensive? Yes, it's like the most comprehensive course ever. <laughs> I can't, I can't really think of anything more comprehensive than that, plus we, we answer lots of questions uh, anytime people are there. So anything we still don't answer, even though there are thousands and thousands of words that you could learn, uh, we'll, we'll still be there to help you if there's anything else. Uh, how can we use the word would? That's, that's kind of a long explanation. Google that or check my channel for more information on that. Elena says, uh, what do you think learning with writing? Would people be fluent? <clears throat> Again, looking at this list over here, I'll make this a bit clearer. W-R-I-T-I-N-G. Writing. So all of the things that people talk about, you can get fluent with these. So just like I've given you a visual example or you see something in writing, something like that, the point is to eliminate the doubt. So you can ignore all of these things and just focus on this. So if... Uh, go ahead. Emo. <laughs> Look at that, we got interrupted over here as I'm doing a live video. Uh, so the point of uh, having a, like a fluency trigger like this is when you have, when you understand what you need, then you can use, oh, okay, I know I need to like maybe get some different examples. I could write or I could read to get those examples. But the point is you just need to eliminate the doubt. That's the, that's the number one thing you need to focus on. It's really the only thing. And you could get that in a number of ways, okay? All right, make sure I've got plenty of time over here. All right. Uh, Gora says, I want to speak like a native. Well, if you want to speak like a native, you have to learn like one and get lots of fluency triggers. That's how it works. Lucas says, how to pronounce uh, without sound ass. How to pronounce without sound ass. You mean like without sounding like an ass? <laughs> Is that what you mean? Uh, if that's what you mean, get uh, Frederick. It will teach you how to pronounce words like a native. I understand it needs practice. Remember, like, like I'll put practice over here as well. 
what do you mean by practice? What like people don't even teachers don't even explain what this means. Like they just they just say these things like, well, you need practice. Like practice practice what? So I could does it does practice mean I repeat something over and over again? Remember, fluency is not it's not like uh like like shooting a basketball or something where I where I need to get like a physical motion. I really just need to understand something well and then I feel confident about using it. So I don't become more confident just by repeating things. So when people say, like, if they give you anything off of this list over here, studying rules, getting translations, repeating things, it could be speaking, listening, reading, writing, or practice, whatever that means, uh, just say, really, the goal is to eliminate the doubt. So repeating, repetition is typically not a good way to eliminate the doubt because it doesn't teach you anything new. All right, I will, let me say that again. Repetition is usually not a good way to eliminate doubt because it doesn't teach you anything new, okay? You need to get different examples. If I just give you one example over and over again and you don't really understand that, then a smart teacher should give you a different example. Try something else, okay? So we want to come at things from different angles, this is what I call naturally varied review, but the point is, how can I trigger this? How can I trigger your ability to speak by eliminating doubt? And that's why I call them fluency triggers, okay? All right, let's see here. Uh, all right, answer that one, all right. All right, let's see. Uh, Pat, this is, can I have the explanation of jump in the bandwagon. Oh, jump on the bandwagon? Well, ban bandwagon is like like people cheering for something. So if there's a, a sports team or somebody doing well, other people will get on that. So people generally like supporting a winning team. <laughs> so if you live in a city like in Chicago when I was young, that was a time when Michael Jordan was playing basketball for the Bulls. Uh, and at that time, everybody had Bulls hats and Bulls you know, jerseys and things, everybody was on the bandwagon. So everyone was there, like you can think about a band, like a physically, like people playing music in a little wagon, you know, a bandwagon. So everybody wants to participate in that because it's a lot of fun, you know. But when the bulls are losing, then everyone takes off their, <laughs> their bulls gear, you know, their bulls hats and things like that. So they're getting off the bandwagon at that point. So people generally are like following what's popular or what's winning or something like that. That's to be on a bandwagon. Oh, it's big. Oh, okay, all right. I think I can remember that now. Now, after your tips and tricks I've learned, uh, I feel myself more confident and speak without stopping for three minutes. Although before I just spoke by one sentence is only thanks again. Glad to hear it. Bega, bega. All right. Glad to hear it. Yes. So again, th this works for everybody. It's, it's not only for some people or some languages or whatever. It works for really learning anything, but I just focus on explaining how it works for learning English. Uh, kids entertainment. Look at that. Uh, I'm from India. You're such a perfect English teacher. Thanks a lot for your teaching. My pleasure. How to pronounce I and I. It's the same pronunciation. Again, if you want to learn, like we cover differences like that in, in Frederick, just get the app. Click on the link in the description below this video to get the app. Hey there, I'm learning so much. Thanks for your greetings from Panama. And I see you there. Thanks love for all the life lessons, says Mr. Mo. Joelman says, I'm reading Captain Marvel comics and came across the word halt. So I'm using Euglish to understand the usage of that word instead of looking for the meaning in dictionary. Yes, excellent. So you're trying to give yourself, you're trying to uh, eliminate the doubt and give yourself different examples. Halt. Stop. All right, so you can hear, again, different people using it in different situations or even other people using, like, wait or stop or don't move, you know. All right, uh, but very good. Esteban says, I moved to the U.S. when I was 15. I graduated from high school four or five years ago, and you're absolutely right. Those ESL classes really don't give you fluency triggers. Yes, so, like, there's, there's teaching, but it's not really teaching you anything. Me giving you... Uh, words and then just saying, well, go home and remember that now. That's a bad teacher. <laughs> and that's unfortunately uh, a, lot of, a lot of education and why a lot, of people, um, a lot of people struggle to speak, unfortunately. I just saw a huge uh, jump in my English level only by listening from one to two hours a day. 
Yep, so it's probably you're giving yourself some fluency triggers even if you don't realize it uh, and you're understanding the language and you feel more confident and that's how it works. So you don't, you don't really need to speak in order to become uh, a, a good speaker. I know this sounds, it sounds weird, it sounds wrong, but you just need to understand and feel confident about something. So you can do it quickly and you can really do it just by getting more examples. Andre, get how to pronounce so without sounding so. Well, try to pronounce it more slowly. So if I say so, and then I say so, I'm trying to over pronounce it. Uh, this is how you would practice things like that. But this is the kind of thing we do in Fluent for Life. Juan says, I just joined your course, but I feel lazy to study any tip to get focused. Well, just think about what you're, what you're interested in. Remember, like, you, you don't want to force yourself, like, to learn anything, but more think about, like, uh, the thing you're interested in. So what is the goal? Why are you learning English? Like, if you want to impress a girl or get a job or whatever, think about that uh, and then focus on that. And, and you'll see, like, with my, with my lessons, uh, it's not like a pain to learn because it's me doing all the hard work of making stuff easy and understandable. All right? So pick something you're interested in and get started. All right. Uh, let's see here. Where did we go? I just like jump down. And does your fluency course start from the basics? Uh, I would watch my videos on YouTube here if you if you don't know basic English already. Um, but uh, it's much better. Uh, really, like fluent for life is for people who know a lot of English already. If you click on the link in the description below the video, you will learn more about the program. Uh, and if you can read and understand that, then you're ready for the program. So if you're, if you're understanding me in this video, you're, you're not a basic learner. Uh, but the program is not for beginners. Uh, let's see. Yes, Lucas, again, get, uh, get Frederick. You can just listen to me pronounce all these different words. Uh, so it goes up to an advanced level. Yes. So that w when I say advanced, what we're really doing is taking you from no confidence to complete confidence. That's the goal. So we want to, we want to flip your communication switch for many, many, many words and phrases and grammar points, things like that. So as you, as you begin the program, like you'll start learning and you begin learning new words and phrases and also feeling more confident about the vocabulary you already know. Okay, so we're going to take all of that and we want to remove the doubt, basically. So the whole program is about removing doubt, making you feel more confident, and then that's when you start speaking. Okay, so we don't, we don't give you like studying and, and the typical kinds of stuff. It's me doing the hard work of this, uh, and then you just really go through the content in different ways. So you might watch something, then listen to it, then read it, and then you go through a different lesson that changes the vocabulary a little bit and, and teaches you in different ways. So it's, it's kind of simulating, uh, like getting fluency triggers in a native environment. That's basically the idea. Uh, let's see. See, this is Google. If someone jumps or climbs on the bench. Oh, okay, you're just giving a, an example. Familia. Yes, and, and also, like, when you get examples, if you just use a dictionary, it's probably not going to feel very emotional for you. So I try to give an example. Like, imagine, like, actually imagine, like, a wagon, like an old, from many years ago, like a wagon. There's a horse, you know, pulling, pulling the wagon, and there's, like, guys with instruments in here playing. That's the bandwagon right there. And it looks like fun. Wow, look at all those guys playing. I want to get on that bandwagon, too. And that's the idea. So people are having fun. They're enjoying something when the team is doing well. And it's not just for sports. That's an obvious example. But, uh, but that's the, I'm trying to show you, like, when I, when I give explanations, I, I draw little pictures and things like that because it's easier. It makes it a bit more emotional for you. You want to use your imaginative memory, not just get a definition. You want to try to, again, trigger this uh, as quickly as possible. And so use whatever resources you can. Uh, thank you always from Korea. Yeah, let me know if, you're, if your name is not written in English uh, and you'd like me to know your name, let me know. Uh, Dilnoza says, hello from Uzbekistan. I'm Dilnoza, which is correct, often with a T or without. You'll hear both. Uh, and it gets, says, in what situation as to, as preposition, gerund, and form, to? No, that's, <laughs> that's way, way beyond the, uh, the subject of this. But uh, I have gone into videos like that, and especially uh, in Fluent for Life, we cover, we cover all that stuff. 
uh, what is the best way to get rid of doubt? It's like just to get more examples or to really see something. Uh, it's to just really understand that thing very well. So it can be very quick, like I gave the example at the beginning uh, of this video with the different kinds of numbers in the alien language. Uh, but it could be uh, a visual example or maybe you make a, it's, it's something that allows your brain to make a connection. So you can imagine like your brain, your brain is getting these things and it's, it's like there's something in your brain and there's the new information. You have to find a way to connect that information with something you already have. All right, so that you have to integrate that information into your brain. And as you learn more, you create a network of all these different things. They're all connected in your brain. That's why your brain looks like a kind of tangle of all these different things. Uh, let's see. All right, Mr. Moore, I have experienced something a bit strange. I feel comfy with native speakers more than foreign speakers. How could you explain that? Well, I would imagine uh, maybe they're you're more used to the way they speak rather than foreigners who might have a different pronunciation or accent or something. That's usually how it is. Uh, Lucas says, is it normal to be home in times of carnival? I don't know. That's, that's for your country, I guess. <laughs> no, no carnival over here. Uh, wow, 101 likes. Uh, thanks, friends. Drew deserves it. Well, thank you guys. Thank you all. Uh, how can we enrich our speaking skills? You, you eliminate doubt. That's it. That's, that's really the, the number one idea from this video is you must eliminate doubt in order to become a confident speaker. Because remember, the, the, fluent, the fluency or the fluent communication switch in your brain, it only flips if you feel confident. That's why if you don't feel confident, you won't say anything. Okay? So you might feel confident about one thing, but not something else. Okay, and you might know this word or that word and you feel confident about saying those, but you don't feel confident about saying anything else. And that's why you would struggle to speak. All right. Uh, let's see. Big again says, uh, Andrew, you are extremely popular and I'm sure you have some money. Why don't you travel around the world with your presentations? Uh, it would be cool if you visit my country one day, which is Turkmenistan. Well, I, I don't need to travel anywhere. This is it. My, my videos are traveling for me. <laughs> uh, I have done that, though. I mean, if, if somebody wanted to invite me, like let's say a university or whatever wanted to like pay me to fly out there, just like have a fun trip and teach a bunch of people, that would be fun. But it, like the power of video means I don't, I don't need to get on a boat or a plane or do anything. I can teach people all over the world right now, just like this. All right, uh, let's see. Lucas says he deserves because he's a hard worker. <laughs> I try, but I'm also trying to be efficient. Like even for me, I don't want to just like work hard. I want to think like, what's the, what's the best way to explain this to people so they feel confident and then they understand what I'm saying here. Uh, Esteban says you probably answered this already, but how often do you make live videos? I downloaded Frederick two weeks ago, by the way. Yeah, if you like Frederick, uh, do leave a review. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Uh, but live videos are maybe once or twice a week. It just depends on when I can do them. But remember, you don't need to watch them live to get the benefit of them. Many people, actually many more people, just watch the replay later. And that, the replay will have a uh, uh, transcript or, uh, subtitles or whatever, uh, usually a day later. Mr. Uh, Ridzwan, I think I get it. It's like visualize or remember other closed example of a word meaning that we want to use. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a visual example. It can be a story also. But you'll notice when you hear a story, you often can kind of see the story in your mind. And so like many lessons in life, even in your native language, it's not like language learning, people will tell you a story to try to teach you something. We use stories to teach our children, okay? So we're like trying to teach them uh, like the story of Little Red Riding Hood or Snow White or like any little story like that. So we're using a story, even if they don't see something, we're using that story to help people make, uh, make a connection to understand something because the goal, is to eliminate doubt. That's really it. So it's not just to study more. Don't try to force yourself to learn anything. Uh, just get more examples or in any kind of like fluency trigger. It's, it's possible to do it by yourself. It's a lot easier when you have someone else who can help you do it, but it is possible. That's what you should be doing though. 
See you again. Uh, Drew, do you know Youglish? It helps a lot when you're in doubt about the usage of a word. Yes, uh, I do recommend Youglish. Youglish is helpful if you already know what the word is. Uh, but if you don't, obviously it's more difficult. You don't really know what you're looking for. That's another reason why a teacher is helpful when you're trying to learn. Good morning, uh, 8 a.m. Let's see. And also a heart from Jihad. All right, I think, look at that. I think we've got through everybody. How do long? We're at uh, 84 minutes, it looks like. All right, uh, I'll give a quick recap as I usually do, uh, but if you have any questions, very quickly let me know. Remember, the typical things that people try to do, even speaking, even speaking, it's not going to help you if you don't feel confident about what you're going to say. So trying to study more, repeating things, trying to study more, getting definitions or translations, it's most likely not going to help you speak. Instead, focus on this side. Remember, you have this little switch here. It begins off, so there are things you want to express, and you're trying to kind of push it this way, and you're, okay, let me get a translation or make a flashcard and study something again and again. Try to, uh, try to push it to on, but you're, 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 it's like you're trying to work against the doubt you have instead of just removing the doubt. So like, like if you have a, uh, another good way to understand this is a door stop. So I have a, a door stop in my room. So here's the door. If we put the little, like, so a door stop, it's just like a little wedge like this that fits uh, under the door. So if I put a door stop, like, behind the door to stop it from opening, then it's, it's, you can, you can, uh, you can keep trying to push on the door, but it's going to be very difficult to open the door because the door stop is there. But if you just ask, hey, could you remove the door stop? And yes, okay, now you can open the door very easily. All right, so the same idea. You need to remove this. This is the thing that's really stopping you. It's not this stuff over here. All right, so the more fluency triggers you can get, the faster you will become a fluent speaker. I guarantee it. I've just shown you in this video how it works. Uh, and understanding this idea of a fluency trigger, if you go back and watch any of my other, like any live videos, uh, you'll see the same thing. I will be sharing stories or visual examples of something. Anything I can do to trigger that fluency in your mind. So it's something I do, that's why I tell people I'm getting them fluent. Obviously you can do this by yourself, but the point is, you know, it's what I do. I enjoy getting people fluent. I, I like, I can't like see your face out there, but I can tell when people understand something like, ah, now I got it. I like to see that expression on people's faces. All right, but that's the basic idea. So the faster you get these fluency triggers, the faster you speak. All right, do you think just listening uh, is improve my English or not? Remember, like any, if you can make that question for any of these things over here. Do you think studying will help me improve my English? Do you think re repetition? Do you think speaking? Do you think listening? Do you think reading or writing or anything else will improve my fluency or language learning ability? It, that's not really the right question. The question is, how do I remove the doubt? Because the doubt is the thing that really stops you from speaking. Once you understand that, there could be many ways that you remove the doubt, just like I've shown, or if you, I've got even some listed in the description below this video. So different ways you would remove doubts. You can do this by yourself, uh, or you can have someone like me help you do that. But the point is, the focus is on here. So it's not about like which one of these things you do. You could do all of those things, but it's more important to eliminate the doubt and think about what's the best way to, uh, to understand this particular idea. All right, so to eliminate the doubt you have uh, about you know, whatever the, the vocabulary or the grammar or the pronunciation, if you do that, then you become a good speaker. Uh, Donald says, when you start teaching writing skills and what strategies can you suggest? Can you start from beginner? Is it possible? How? Uh, what do you mean teaching writing skills? Like actually teaching the letters and spelling? Or are you talking about how to write essays or something like that? If you're talking about actually how to write and remember spelling, that's what we do in Frederick. Um, but for teaching people how to write well, I would, I would read good writing and, and write by hand like physically write by hand what other people are writing for that for that kind of writing. So if you're writing uh, essays, then you would find people who have good essays and just actually take a pencil or pen and paper and write that by hand. 
So just to get a good example, and it's, it's something you do with a pencil uh, or pen and paper rather than using it on the computer because that slows down the language a bit more for you to give you time to think about what you're writing, uh, but that will help you do that as well. So it just depends on what you're uh, specifically interested in doing. All right, and thank you from Russia. Look at that. The final word of the day with the, uh, looks like sunflower. Oh, another question here, sir, says, uh, hi from Bangkok, Thailand. Want to improve my listening skill. I can't watch Netflix without subtitles. Please advise. Go back and watch this video again. Go back and watch this video again. Watch this video again. Remember, this is, I, I always say my videos are like important and helpful, but this idea of the fluency trigger is probably the most, I don't know. I would say that's the best idea I've ever had for explaining how this works. Okay, so it's even, it's even better than like comprehensible input uh, or learning English as a first language or learning English like a native speaker because it really gets to the heart. Like even when I, when I explain to people you should be learning English as a first language rather than learning English as a second language like this, um, it's important. I really want to understand like what are you trying to do? Where does the fluency actually come from? And so even a native speaker does some of this. Okay, so you could be you could be like a native speaker is, is still trying to study from a book because they have bad teachers just like language learners have bad teachers too. Uh, and, and I don't even want to you know talk about like saying bad teachers. It's just a lot of people don't know this is possible and they don't know they should be focusing on this. They just learn like as a teacher, okay, like this is what everybody does and they just do that same thing. But once you understand this, uh, the idea of a fluency trigger, it's really what can I do, what insight or story or visual example or something can I do to eliminate the doubt? So if you have a question about the language, answer the question. That's how it works. If you have a worry about something, you need to destroy that worry by feeling more confident. Usually it could be with more examples or something, but you, you will actually feel the example. You will feel when the trigger happens, you feel it. you like, ah, I understand that now. That's what you're going for. So if you're doing it by yourself, just answer the questions you have about the language. You think, okay, here's a grammar point I want to learn. I don't feel very confident about using this word. Why do I not feel confident about that? Maybe it's because you like don't know the vocabulary well enough or whatever, but you need to answer that question for yourself if you're doing this by yourself. All right, uh, and JC Sento says, that's a great idea. Mr. Shaw says, uh, how to improve fluency in non-native country where we don't have anyone to practice with. Remember, uh, it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter, uh, you could be in a box but you have the internet right now and you can get all the information you need to eliminate any doubt you have. That's why lots of people in Fluent for Life over here, they don't live in English speaking countries. Some of them live, I have, there's like a few people I think that are just, they're in various places like up in a mountain village or something and they don't have any native speakers to speak with, but they still improve <laughs> because I'm eliminating the doubt. That's how it works, okay? So if you eliminate the doubt, it doesn't matter where you live, uh, but we also show you in the program how to meet people to practice with online if you want to do that. But it's important, like you don't start with speaking, you start with eliminating the doubt and then you speak, all right? So you should really like reverse these kinds of things. So try to eliminate the doubt as fast as possible, and then you can like do the practice of the language, like using it in, in your, uh, your daily life. Dan says, teacher, it is a problem if I use my first language to learn another language. Yes, if you're using your, your native language, again, translations is over here. If you're using translations, it means you still have doubts about the English. So you need to eliminate those doubts so you don't, so you don't think uh, through your native language. If you learn through translations, you will speak through translations also, and you will continue to struggle when you speak. Everyone will have that same problem. All right, Mr. Shaw is taking a bunch of sentences and repeating them 100 times. That can improve my accent and fluency. Uh, probably not. You see repetition over here as well. So just repeating something is not likely to help you. But if you get varied review, so naturally varied review, as I call it, is when I'm hearing like other people say something, that will improve my accent much faster than me trying to say it over and over again myself. I need to hear other people speaking. It's how I eliminate the doubt. You don't, you, remember if you repeat something, 
I'm not learning anything new, so it's unlikely that I will eliminate any doubt. I will, I will stay in the same place because I'm doing the same thing. So I have to change that in some way. I need to get a different example, like hearing somebody else say that word. Uh, Gore says, my target is ESL band nine, or IELTS, excuse me, band nine, I sp and speak like a native. I enrolled in BUSU, memorize and plan to join POC English or ABA English. Well, good luck with those. Uh, if, if they don't give you fluency triggers, then I wouldn't do any of that. Um, but, you know, g give it a try, <laughs> I guess. Lucas says, uh, the translation of fantastic in Portuguese, it is a fantastico. Yeah, and that's why it's some of those things you learn, uh, like translation things like that, it's the same thing um, in English as well. Uh, let's see, Gore says, I understand everything you're saying, but I lack fluency. I want a course that will help me become super fluent so that I can speak without, uh, on any given topic without hesitation. That's what this is. So if you'd like to do that, click on the link in the description to learn more about the program. But uh, unless, unless a program is actually eliminating the doubt, then they're just teaching you more the traditional way and you are unlikely to get fluent. I can't comment on those other programs because I don't know what they are, but this is what you should look for. Whether you learn with me or by yourself or somebody else, it doesn't matter, but this is the thing here. That's what you must do if you want to speak. All right, so you can try to read or write, like those things are a little bit easier to do, but when you need to communicate quickly, confidently, without hesitation, you need to say the right thing at the right time, you need to eliminate the doubt. So if you'd like help doing that, like getting thousands of fluency triggers about the things you're interested in for your life, that's what we do in Fluent for Life. All right, well, if you have any questions, you can send us an email at info at englishany1.com, but definitely check out Frederick and Fluent for Life. Uh, if especially Frederick has been helpful for you, leave us a review. Let other people know that the program is helpful and it's helped you and tell other people about it. And then I will see you in the next video. Uh, it should be Friday, I think. But remember, try to get those triggers. You gotta flip that fluent communication switch in your brain if you want to speak. The faster you get those, the faster you speak. Bye-bye.